short video, we're going to introduce the notion of a particle system. To have a look at what particle systems are and then to look at some of their design structures that are quite commonly used uh, across different implementations. We'll follow this up with a, a second video where we'll look at an implementation within our Android framework just to see how we can code it and to look at some of the different effects that we can um, generate. So in terms of particle systems, these are very, very commonly used within really all types of, um, of games, certainly ones where visual impact comes into it, both in two dimensions and in three dimensions. They're very flexible and they're certainly worthwhile something implementing uh, to be implemented. Give you an illustration here, we've got a, a couple of screenshots from a two dimensional, three dimensional game. And in terms of the various smoke effects that you have within both of these scenes, and also the fire effects that you have within both of the scenes, these are delivered using a particle system. So we can use it for drawing things like smoke, for fire, not only for that, if we want to do explosions, we can use a particle system uh, to, to different sort of waterfalls or other forms of moving water, to sparks, to dust, to snow, to rain, to bullet casings, to different visual effects within the game. So that one system will underpin all of these and we can very flexibly then use that to generate a very wide range of different visual um, effects. So there's a nice algorithm underpinning it, worthwhile uh, considering how or if this might fit within the type of game that you are uh, developing. When we think about uh, how we might want to go about implementing this, we'll generally split our particle system up into two bits. We'll have an emitter. And the job of the emitter, as the name suggests, is to emit particles. So an emitter and then a set of particles that has been emitted uh, from that particular um, uh, effect. The emitter, um, it, its goal is to bring particles into existence. Whenever a particle has been created, it has its own lifespan and it does its own thing and it sort of evolves from its point of creation. Depending on the effect that we're generating, some emitters will generate a, a constant supply of particles with, with some degree of random variation. So for example, the three visual effects you can see here of sort of smoke, heavy or light or flames, these would have an emitter that would be constantly generating particles. Some other effects, uh, for example an explosion, you would have a burst, an initial burst of particles which then sort of spread out and, and do their own thing. So depending upon the effect, we will configure an emitter class uh, so that it generates particles at an appropriate rate for the thing that is that we're trying to simulate. Uh, each uh, time we update and draw this, uh, so effectively from the emitter's point of view, if we update it, we're asking it, do you need to create any new particles? For each particle, when we update it, it'll have different positions and properties and we'll evolve those properties. When we're drawing it, you don't actually draw the emitter, you'll just simply draw each of the particles in terms of their location within your game world. Uh, the particles themselves, they generally have a number of properties because they are visual things, they'll have a position because they generally move, they'll have a velocity. Often they rotate, so normally they'll have a, an orientation and rotational velocity. They can have a scale, they can have a fade value, they can have a color value different uh, common characteristics, um, depending on the particle effect that you're simulating, some will be more important to get in than others. Generally, they also have a lifespan or lifetime property. So they are born, they're birthed, and then they evolve over their lifespan to the point of death, at which point they are disappeared. Uh, they don't actually exist as part of the simulation anymore. One of the most important things about a particle system, the reason why it works, is the notion of randomness. So whenever a particle is being created, it is given, it may be given a certain direction or a certain range of values, but it is randomly selected within that range. And it's this randomness that helps give the non-uniformity to it, that it looks, it looks it's as, as irregular as smoke or as fire normally would look. So getting a degree, a controlled degree of randomness into how things are created will be a key component uh, of how we simulate different visual effects. Um, give you an illustration of, of this. Uh, so if you look at the, the diagram or the picture slide, it's of an explosion effect. And looks, but that particular explosion effect comprises six smaller images, or multiple repeated copies of them, that we see on the top left of the image. 
So therein, we're taking those basic images and we're drawing them multiple times at different sizes, at different positions, at different orientations, some faded in more than others, and putting them together so that it brings this overall effect. And if you look closely at the actual image, um, you'll see that it actually is comprised of lots of different parts, and each of those different parts will map onto one of the six images that we have uh, available in that simulation. Um, when updating a particle, so each of those particles that are created as part of this, when we update it, it'll have a velocity, it'll have a rotation, that gives it a new position, it gives it a new orientation. We may have a defined um, or a controlled mechanism that will determine how the size changes over time or the fade changes over time. And um, they'll, they'll provide the normal update. In more fancy systems, we might uh, also then do a little bit of collision detection with the environment. That if you have, for example, a volumetric smoke uh, particle system, it'll check to see what types of things is it pushing against to give them the appearance of, of being a, a, a sort of a 3D mass. Rendering stage actually is very straightforward in these things. Normally there's not a large amount of rendering to be done. We're simply drawing out each of the particles. Sometimes we'll want to use normal alpha blending. Other times we'll want to use additive um, blending. And we'll get onto that in a little bit. This will depend on the, the particle um, effect that we're doing. So how do we bring this about? Here we have um, two uh, basic images. And every single time we draw a particle, basically what we're drawing is that image. So drawing a particle is nothing more than saying, let's draw a single image at a certain location, at a certain orientation, with a certain fade, but it's one image at a time. And the reason particle systems work is that we don't just draw one image, we draw lots of images. We have lots of particles. Every single particle we draw, we add an image to our overall diagram. So in doing this here, we might have several smoke images. We might have several sort of, if you like, explosion images. We can draw a bunch of them and combine them together to give, in this case, our net effect at the end. And if you have a look at that, effectively what we've done here is that in terms of the smoky effect, we've taken a number for smoke images and drawn them together. That would be probably using normal, uh, just normal alpha blending to add them together. And for the second one, for the explosion effect, there we've taken what is sort of a dull image, and we're using additive blending to add many of these things um, together, sort of all drawn on top of one another. And if you were to imagine the particular simulation at the bottom, that if it's an explosion, you'll have a bunch of particles that are all created initially in the same location. So using additive blending, you'll get a sort of a small, very bright, very white configuration. As they move apart, and as they separate, then the amount of additive overdraw will decrease, the color will decrease, and will have the effect then of the explosion sort of fading out as it gets bigger and larger. So it's the type of thing that works by way of providing a simulation, in this case, of an explosion. Um, not really much more to, to say in terms of this one here. It will be important uh, to, to sequence uh, which bits are drawn using normal alpha blending, which bits are drawn using uh, additive blending, depending upon the, the simulation. And this all then ties into the notion of particle management. A uh, few things to, to highlight here. Uh, the first one really is about particle reuse. Now, Particle systems, if it's a smoke one, we're constantly generating particles. A smoke particle's been created, it's drifting in a certain direction, it's increasing as smoke expands out, it's fading out to represent that. Come to the end of the lifespan. Now, we don't want to simply delete that because that's the type of thing that would put a heavy burden then on our garbage collecting system. Instead, we want to reuse it. So it's very common within uh, particle managers that we would have a um, a system, a caching system to reuse our particles. So if we need a new one, we can take it from our pool, we can give it some values, and as things come to the end of their lifespan, we can put them back into the pool, make them available for reuse. Um, it may be, I mean, if, if you're using it, a particle system to have for have explosions or things like that, you may want to put some uh, limits in terms of the maximum number of particles you want to have active at a point in time. And you can get into fancy things about how you try to manage this to ensure uh, you don't have too heavy a uh, computational load. The draw order is important. So in the previous example where we were using normal alpha blending for the smoke and additive blending for the uh, fire effect, 
it would be important to sequence these things so that we do all of our normal alpha blending first of all and then anything that requires additive blending we draw that after it and that'll give us the right composition uh, of the the effect overall um, depending on how you write this sometimes you might have uh, a particle system that only does one particle effect and there you can have a set of different particle systems Alternatively, you could write one uh, fancy manager that manages lots of different effects at the same time. So there's no one right or one wrong, wrong way to do it. There's lots of different options by way of how you might want to manage all of these particles. So key takeaways in this mean there is only a couple of ones here. Particle effects, very, very flexible, very uh, good to have within the game in terms of what they, they offer. In principle, it's very straightforward. We're simply drawing a lot of images at the same time. Um, where it gets interesting is in terms of how we manage those images effectively and how we draw them and evolve them so they give the appearance of a certain effect. Now, we'll, uh, this will be the end of this particular introductory talk. Another video, the next one after this, we're going to have a look at an implementation uh, in Android and there we'll get into this in a little bit more detail about how we can implement certain visual effects.